Hey guys, welcome to Guy Stuff. Today I've got a really quick and easy seafood meal. This is one of my favorites. I'm a huge seafood fan. And crawfish is one of my absolute favorites. So this is what I do from time to time. I'm cooking for one or two, so this is a real easy way to make it up. Obviously the best way to make crawfish is live, but you can't get it everywhere. You can't get it year-round, and it's really expensive to buy in 20, 40-pound sacks. And Well, I can't eat that much. So here's what I do. You can get all this at your local grocery store. Basically, I do a sweet corn, crawfish, shrimp, and a potato combo here. You can substitute other stuff if you want, but this is the classic combo. And I also use a powder or a liquid crawfish boil. Uh, this is one I haven't tried before. I like to try new stuff, but there's all kinds of different ones out there. I prefer the kind that you pour in as opposed to the boiling bags. They get a little bit more flavor. This is a, a pretty fast cook, so you want a lot of flavor in there. The boiling bags are great if you're doing live crawfish, so you're cooking them a little bit longer. But when you buy them frozen like this, they're already cooked, so you're actually only kind of reheating them. So they're not in the water that long. You don't want them in there too long because they get really mushy. So I use the powder or the oil, and that gets as much flavor in as quickly as possible. Of course, if you don't want the shrimp, you can put in mussels or clams or scallops or whatever else you want. As far as the big potatoes, the important thing is, not big potatoes, the little potatoes, you want them small. Baby reds are real popular, they're cheap. You can buy a little bag like this for three bucks. You can get them onesie twosie, or you can use butter potato. Those work really well too. The point is, you want them nice and small so they cook quickly. And what we're gonna do is use a large pot now this one, uh, I think I got this at Ikea, they're like 20 25 bucks. If you're doing more than this, maybe you have a group of people over, you can do a couple bags of these and some more potatoes, a couple more bags of shrimp. You can go to Walmart and get those like uh, camping pots and they make a really big one and I'll show you one in a little bit and they're really cheap. I got a full set of the camping gear with the huge pot for like, I don't know, 30 bucks. They're really cheap, they're very thin, you got to take care of them. but. Uh, you know, they're bigger than this, so I get twice the volume. But this is more than enough for all of this and also room to spare. So the first thing we're going to do is get some water in here. I start with hot water to, you know, give a little head start. And then we got to bring that to a boil, and we're going to dump this in and start potatoes first. So I've got the potatoes prepped here. I should have looked closer. The bag I bought seemed to be a little old, and I had quite a bit of sprouts on here. You don't need to cut these up or peel them or anything. All I did here is cut off what was actually sprouting. That's not ideal. Um, if you can, pick them up onesie twosie and make sure they're nice and clean. Like I said, this bag probably just a little old, so it had some potatoes growing a little bit in there. Usually I don't need to do that, but not a big deal. As far as the corn goes, there's two basic types. You got regular and sweet corn. I'm from Michigan, so those of you from Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, maybe even parts of PA, you know what real sweet corn is, and that's actually one thing I really miss from Michigan. Corn down here in the south, they have no freaking idea what real good corn tastes like. They're tiny and they're not sweet. And even these commercial sweet corns, they don't taste anything like Michigan sweet corn. But they're as close as I can get. So I've got essentially four ears of corn here. I've got a one pound bag of shrimp, a three pound bag of the crawfish, and a handful of potatoes. And this will make two really nice meals for under 25 bucks. Uh, shrimp was eight bucks, this was 11, that was three something. A couple bucks for the seasoning and the bag of potatoes and I really didn't even need the bag. I could have bought you know, by the pound and got them for a buck. So overall, not a bad deal. I've got the water here starting to boil. This is gonna take a while. Got a couple gallons in there. I filled this up about halfway. All you need to do is make sure you have enough water in there to make sure everything's topped off for whatever you're cooking. So, you know, if that means a half or a three-quarter full, whatever it has to be, you just want to make sure you have enough water in there. Once that reaches a boil, we're going to be putting the seasoning in and dropping the potatoes in, and then it's going to be a 20-minute or so boil for those to give them a head start. Then we're putting in the corn, and that is going to be pretty quick. We'll leave that in there for, you know, another 10, maybe 15 minutes. Then our shrimp goes in. This is raw shrimp. You can use the pre-cooked shrimp, but there's really no reason to. If you use the raw, it'll give you some more time, and that means these will pick up more of the seasoning. So these will be in there for uh, four to five minutes or so. And then last, the crawfish will go in. And like I said, we're basically going to be reheating the crawfish, so they're only going to stay in a maximum of five minutes. 
So that'll give a, the potatoes and the corn real good time to actually cook and soak up the seasoning and the shrimp without being overcooked the same and then again with crawfish and then once everything's done we very quickly have to get it out of the water because the crawfish actually gets kind of mushy if you're using the pre-cooked and you overcook it or should I say overheat it. Alright so give this probably another 10 minutes to get to more of a boil. This is an electric range so it, uh, it covers the thing but it's not gas this won't get to a huge rolling boil but I know the point it'll get to and then we'll start cooking. So now we're boiling. I'm going to go ahead and put in our seasoning packet here. And the more the merrier, you really can't over season it. There we go. And we're going to gently put in our potatoes. Give these a good 20 minute cook. Let them soak up some of the spices and start to soften up. So let's see here. Use my other timer. All right, let that go. Ooh, can already smell the spices. Yeah. Ooh, kitchen smells good. <coughs> Good. Yeah, there's some cayenne in there. Oh, oh man. Ooh, and of course, if you like, you can always start and add your own. Let's see. Uh, add some cayenne up here somewhere. Ah, there we go. You can always add some more cayenne red pepper. Doesn't do a whole lot because, like I said, we're just reheating. You can also add crushed red pepper flakes. That works. <coughs> <laughs> wow, okay, don't stand over the pot. Ah, yeah, but this particular mix does not need any more. All right, that's good stuff. Let those cook, and then we'll start with corn. The potatoes have been in for 20 minutes. Now it's time to go ahead and put in our corn. We're going to do these for another 10. Well, these are frozen, so they're going to drop the temp of this water real quick. That's why I like to give it another solid 10 minutes. Fresh corn, you don't have to do them that long, but half that 10 minutes is just going to be thawing out the corn, basically. And then it'll actually cook as we go through the shrimp and the crawfish. So those are in, the water stopped boiling, and we're going to go for another 10 minutes. We just hit the end of the 10 minutes. The corn has been in for and the water is just starting to come back to a boil and that's the point that you want. You, have, you want to put stuff in when the water is actually at a boil, not just steeping. So now, ready to put in the shrimp. I just emptied the frozen container into this colander here. And we're going to just rinse these real quick in cool water. Break up some of this ice, get them, not defrost them, but get off that frost and nastiness. We don't want that going into our pot. So just real quick, get off all the big ice chunks, melt those, get them loose, they'll defrost and cook real quick. We're only going to put these in for five minutes. So there we go, we got those loosened up. They're still frozen, still raw. Shake off the excess and they're ready to go in. And these are going to cook pretty quickly. We're going to start these at five minutes and then they'll have an additional few minutes when the crawfish goes in. Ten minutes is up for the shrimp. Water's just started to come to a boil again. Now we're go going to go ahead and add our three pounds of crawfish. Again, these are frozen, so the water is going to cool right down. We're going to give these seven minutes of actual cook time, then we're going to quickly take it off the heat, and we're going to let everything soak for another ten minutes, and that'll help really get the spices going without making everything mushy. So guys, going in here should be just enough room in the pot. 
Mmm, smells good already. Another real good thing you can add to this if you like is some good spicy sausage. Alright, got those in. Grab a spoon here. Get them into the mix. Oh yeah. Now the water stopped boiling, so it's got to catch back up. Let's start my timer up again. Like I said, for seven minutes. It's real good cook time for these. Just let everything go. House smells really good right now, let me tell you. Perfect. Yeah, we've got good coverage on the water, food all the way to the bottom. All right, it's probably going to take the full minutes just to come back to a boil, and then we're going to take these quickly off the heat and let these soak in here, and then we'll be ready to serve them up. Ten minutes of cook time for the crawfish has ended, so now we're going to go ahead and turn off our heat, move our pot off. And we're just going to let these soak for, uh, I'm going to give it ten minutes. About the most you want to go. It depends on how much you're cooking. And then what we're going to do is fish everything out of the water. We're going to drain it. And what I've got are some nice big bowls here. I just want to line it with paper towel a little bit. And however you want to get these out, you can use a colander like this if you've got a you know, deep fry fisher, whatever you want. Just you're going to get the stuff out and let it drain. There's going to be a lot of extra water in the shell, so you want a little bit of paper towel to soak that up. And they're just going to lay it out, fix your plates, or dump it out and let people grab it as they wish, and we'll be good to go. We'll see you in a minute. We've had everything sitting here, soaking up all the spices. Looks real good. Shrimp's nice and pink. Corn smells good. Spices smell good. Time to serve it up and eat. Now, like I said, you can get these out any way you want. I'm going to take some big scoops here. I'm going to be using probably two or three of these big bowls. Just going to dump everything in. Doesn't matter. Just let everybody pick what they want. I love my corn with salt and butter. Same on the potatoes. I do recommend eating this crawfish first, as it is by far the best when it's piping hot. Not that it's bad cold, but the rest of the stuff is a lot better once it cools down than the crawfish. Get my bowl here. Treat out. bottom you're gonna have a bunch of claws and legs and pieces what I do is I get out all the heavy stuff here the corn the potatoes best I can and then drain the water that'll leave me with a few shrimp and crawfish at the bottom that's easy enough to just fish out all right I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna empty this water get the remaining stuff out of the bottom these are good to go. So there you have it. Really easy, quick, cheap crawfish foil. I got shrimp, and sweet corn, and baby red potatoes in here. Like I said, you can do what you want. Maybe some spicy sausage, some clams, mussels are really good, scallops, hey, whatever you want. Maybe get a little garlic bread going with it. Definitely some cold beers. And that's it. Alright, so this has been uh, Guy Stuff number one. If you're just doing this on YouTube, I'm just doing these little Guy Stuff videos in between the cigar stuff. I asked on the main site if uh, people were interested. You know, just some other stuff I do. I do a lot of cooking, barbecuing, maybe some tech stuff. I don't know. I'm just having fun with it. So this is number one. This is one of my favorite meals. I think I'll do uh, maybe some barbecued ribs. That sounds good. Yeah, maybe I'll try that in a few days. Anyway. Goodies. See you later.